myself, Chris Jericho, and Michael Hayes basically created and worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was not intended to be, you know, um, like cash-ins weren't even a thing that we had considered back then. This is the word to go, yo. Well, hello, ladies. Happy Wednesday, baby girls. My BFF, my sisters. Yes. From another hey, misters. Yes. And everybody in the live chat, thank you for joining us. And while you're here, don't forget to click that likey likey button right there, right down there, just right below. And don't forget <laughs> to, you know, subscribe. Subscribe and pass the word around. Yep. Pass it totally. around because you're missing a big party every Wednesday. A big party. The hump day. The hump day, baby. The hump day. <laughs> and, our, and, and our favorite is bell let's ring that with bell yes and get notified every time our show is on so yeah you sure can lisa you're really out doing us with the bell my little measly bell is pathetic compared to yours. look at this i got mine at a thrift bell. shop at a thrift shop it's a Me hey too. listen it's not the size of the bell that counts it's the clang the of the ring i don't know it's, it's just the way weird. you ring it it's the ring way you dong. ring it ring it it's ding, the ding, clang, ding, clang, clang. yeah Yes. With yes. the trolley? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that it? We're, we're, we're starting with the things trolley. off odd because... Clang, clang, clang with the bell. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom with my heart beat. Oh, God. We're <laughs> singing show tunes and making innuendos, so you know what it is. It's Wednesday night, our favorite night. If you guys are watching on a replay, thank you for being here. But hello, as Lisa said, to all of the live chatters, because we are here every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. for those of us in the UK, so thank you for being here, wherever you may be watching from. Actually, let us know in the chat where you're watching from, because we have a lot of international friends that join the show, a lot of new people that are joining the show, Evander and James and Emily, uh, a lot of new friends in the chat. And speaking of the chat room, we want to give a very special, slightly belated, happy birthday to Tony LaRusso. You might know him as God TV. Ring that bell for Tony's birthday. Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, Tony. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Someone said it's your birthday. Well, it's not really your birthday. It's a couple days after your birthday. And we're celebrating your birthday right here on Golf TV. Yeah! You know, that was beautiful. Dude, I, I love that the song. celebration deep in my heart. I did. <laughs> Happy like birthday, Tony. Thank you for all you do. He's God TV. He is running the show here tonight with us and every uh, Wednesday. And he is your reason that you're enjoying all of these new snazzy graphics and amazing poses doing a great job so tony we love you thank you we love your beautiful family Mwah. happy birthday Mwah. happy birthday tony. speaking happy of running the show y'all our Ooh. guest today has been known to run the show to Ooh. run the whole damn show if you will head writer lead writer of brawl for a very long time lisa while you were there while i was there just put a book out recently which actually just came out on paperback few days ago um with a few edits i found out with a few little baby edits oh. but also a dear friend of ours and amazing amazing man huge mets fan not that not that anyone loves mr Needs met like he <laughs> loves mr met but we really want to welcome our friend brian the work session yes Woo. Woo come on wow. bry guy oh, man. bring him He's on a man. Bry guy Yay. Brian, thank you for joining our show. We're so excited. You haven't aged one bit. Holy <laughs> moly, being in the entertainment business, that's a that's a milestone, honestly. Yeah. But we, we like thank to start you. our thank show. Yep, yeah, we love you. We love you. Big fans of yours. But um, thank you for being on our show. And we start the show with what you're drinking and what you're wearing. So please share the audience. Tell us everything, Jewel. Tell us Honestly. everything. Give us the tea. That is, I, oh, I'm wearing a shirt that I had from my WWE days. Uh, oh. I still wear it. I'm not sure where it's from. Um, but I was on a lot of Zooms today, so I wanted to like look presentable. Otherwise, most You're of my clothing, Collared polo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of my clothing is Love obtained uh, via fanatics.com. Um, <laughs> that's where I wear most of my menswear and outerwear and mm -hmm. uh I'm drinking water look at you go a little evian good to hide yeah well i was just like on a disgusting packed rush hour uh four train 
uh, here uh-huh. in New York City. So, you know, you need to turn on the air conditioner and hydrate immediately after that. Yeah, you right. Don't. Honestly, yes. Brian, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you I don't know how you do it. How you still live in New York City. You love it so much. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember, you know, we've hung out in New York City before. I remember I do love uh, to visit. Yeah, like one of my fondest memories is in a parking garage with you after an MSG show and these people are like gathering going, "Oh my god, it's Mickey James." And some guy. <laughs> You're that uh, guy. Yeah, and that was before the, that was before the term rando was like you know made fashionable. I was, you know, that's I so funny. That you're, hey, if you're an actor, you'd be Marlon Rando. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the, the story started with what's more New York than we had this time in the parking lot. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I love of all New the York times the parking lot. It's Mickey parking you guys know like what a. You know, the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, is great and it's historic. But, you know, for talent, especially, it's a parking nightmare. You know, you have to it's, park across the street and, like, you're the Beatles all of a sudden. You're, you're like, battling a wave of, you know, <laughs> fans yeah. who are barricaded off on either side. And, you know, as you, like, then you, then you have the indignity of just, like, here's my ticket. And just, like, waiting for the car and whatever fans manage to, like, sneak through, like, a game of Frogger or something. Just, like... <laughs> It's iconic. Yeah, it's crazy. Sure. It is. The parking is insane. Insane. And but I don't I think ever- I've ever not parked in going there. I've never like Ubered or valeted in there because we've always had a show the night before or the night after or just the monotony or we had to go because we weren't typically staying, you know, had to fly out of JFK or somewhere else. So it was just easier. But the parking was insane. And because so. I'm a massive ENC fan, and yes, I'm saying it that way because that was like my era. Whenever someone to this day, when someone says MSG, I always think of them going, Oh yeah, ENC and MSG, and doing this hilarious promo about like sports and just that's what they used to like piss people off with. Oh my god. Yeah. Those oh, were the I, days. I, I'm, I'm still friends with most of those people that hung out at the outside of the MSG. Frank. Frank is from Frank. We love Frank. Outside, yeah, he does all the art for us and stuff like that. But um, we saw them all the time, all the time, and you started to get to know their names. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, their we, autographs. By the way, I also you know would write specifically, um, you know, or or write with you know Jay and Adam Edge and Christian those cheap heat kind of but creative sports yeah. promos mainly. Um, so I could get free clothing out of it. Like <laughs> Boston, you know, we do the we reenact the Bill Buckner through the legs game six of the eighty six World Series, which I'm sure you're all, you know, very familiar with. Um oh, so I remember yeah. like it was yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and, I love uh, the Mets jersey after that. And I and I right. kept the uh Latrell Sprewell gold uh Knicks jersey. Uh, that I let you know that I that I bought and expensed and then gave to Gold Dust to wear as a quote unquote elaborate disguise uh, to a cost Booker T in Seven Eleven and then I got to keep the jersey. That's like uh-huh. that was my end back then. Is that, you were, uh, it was that was actually quite clever. I'm proud of you. Yeah, you're yeah. making it work for you. Work smarter, did, not harder, folks. For those keeping uh, yeah. And home. how did you talk the guys into not like just keep and just to keeping it instead well, of giving thing. it back Maybe, to you? I mean, first of all, Edge and Christian don't care about any of the teams that I like. They don't. They don't. Um, barely any of the sports that I like. They're they're hockey, <laughs> guys, really. They are, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's because yeah. they're Canadian. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. too Canadian to function. They're Canadian AF. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Gold Dust, yeah, Gold Dust didn't care. But you know, Gold Dustin's not going to want a Latrell Sprewell jersey. You know, I'll yeah. just be. Like, I'll take that back to props. You know, yeah, for you. Back to props. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, it's so tight. I don't understand. Why would you get this? It's too small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nostalgia. <laughs> Ladies, can I ask, uh, if if I may, what you're wearing, who you're wearing, and what you're drinking tonight? Let's go to Miss Lisa because Lisa is has a little jaunty scarf for this occasion, which I appreciate. I do this for you, Val. I do this for you now. I you know, this it. is beautiful. beautiful. Fancy. I feel very, very uh-huh. fancy. I am wearing... Um, uh, a maxi dress that has, I was supposed to go to Israel um, in a couple weeks, has the American flag Love and the Star of David on the side. Oh, wow. I got all these, I got all these dresses, that. all these dresses to go to Israel and it got canceled. So oh. there you have it. But, um, but yes. now you have a beautiful dress. That's so I do. Cool. I do. It's so yeah. comfy. 
and, um, okay. and I, I know Brian's Jewish, so I did it purposely also. And I'm wearing drinking just a little bit of um, orange juice. <laughs> I still have to pack because I'm flying out to Canada tomorrow. So um, little orange juice in my little mug. And I, I did love because we love you, Brian. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yes. Well, at least you didn't get rerouted from Israel to from the United States to Israel to Canada. At least you know now that you're going to Canada ahead of time. Yeah. So not a big yes. right. shock. And, and you guys, I have a, a hurricane warning um, for San Diego for a Sunday. You guys will be watching after. So I'll let you guys know next week how I get back because I'm now I've never heard a hurricane in San Diego. It's I've weird. not heard when you were saying that I've never heard yeah. of a hurricane on the West coast, but I'm presuming yeah, it does happen. Oh, you know, I'm sure listen, it does. Listen, listen, climate control. Um, listen, listen, yes. people with the weather. God is pissed. <laughs> Wildfires and stuff. That's what it is. It's real simple. Um, I will go very quickly. Just what I'm wearing. Um, I, 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 you know, Ella's probably in the chat. Hello, Ella. She loves a headband. Zara. You know, it's 24 karat, seven ninety nine. Love it. Uh, I am drinking a little <laughs> bit of rosé that I got on the train here, so you know it's good. It is from Provence, and that's my favorite. I get a little bougie with my rosé in a little steel cup because I like to keep it fresh and sassy. Uh-huh. And you can travel out with that, you know, and no one's the wiser. You say, oh, yeah. it's just water. It's yeah, just it's water just in here. A little pink yeah. lemonade. That's it. Speaking of pink, pink lemonade, lemonade. Val, I'm actually drinking a little pink lemonade. Oh, I'm a little vodka, but check out this That's cup so from the Audacity Bling. Your friend, it's on the back, um, and she put my logo on it with the Starbucks. What's up, Bucks? Oh, that's, that's Not to be confused bucks. with Seven Bucks. Yes. No, yes. this is just the star. It's just the star. Yeah. It's just They're one measly little star. Disconnected companies. Totally. <laughs> one sure. does coffee and one does something else. Yeah. Make, yeah. Makes things. They both create make magic. Yes. Yes. They do both make magic. magic. They mm. both make magic. Good wow. segue. Yeah. And what you wearing, Nikki? Um, just a comfy sweater. I feel like I've had this forever. And my little Lulu earrings, because I realized um, I forgot to put earrings in. So I grabbed these off the nightstand. Adorable. Crystals. That's it. That's Jordan. right. And our gall pillow here and a little figure mania plug ski in the back, you know, just conveniently placed behind me in case you were curious. Bit or if branding. I fell asleep. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's so comfortable, yeah. right? Like you want to fall asleep so on that gauze pillow, which I is do. floating underneath on our store right here. Thanks for asking everyone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear your stories because you guys, like I had not, I don't have the pleasure of working with Brian in person, but you guys I'm just going to give you the floor because I can't wait to hear about your time working with Brian in the WWE. WWE. That's when they were like, get the F out. Remember that? Oh, with the, that with was. The, the branches and that woman. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was my time. So, uh, Brian, I'm marking out because I'm like, I have a million questions, but you guys go with your stories. And I'm just going to sit here like a fangirl. Get excited. <laughs> Brian, when did we first meet? When, I think obviously we met when I debuted or when I started coming up and stuff. But when did we really start like hanging out and friending? Because I felt like I was on TV for a bit. And obviously you were the head writer and I didn't think I could talk to you, talk to you, you know, for <laughs> a while until we just hung out one night. And then we have like cobblestone street stories where he had to piggyback when he lost to me. Uh, he lost to Candace in a game of yeah. uh, pool. That uh -oh. was a big story. I was, I was, I was waiting to, to see when you would bring that up. I oh, I'm bringing it up right out of the gate because it's one of yeah. my favorite stories of all time. <laughs> well, I don't even know where to begin. Candace is a hustler, as we know. I mm -hmm. think she grew up in the in the pool halls of Milwaukee somewhere. Um, you know, yes. crafting her trade, uh, watching Color of Money on a loop. Um, but yeah, no, I know. Like, well, I was thinking about this myself. You know, you came up and and immediately were involved in a you know obviously a famous storyline with Trish. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know there's a whole history behind it with you guys pitching it. Right. Uh, and I don't remember, was it? Well, like I originally pitched it for, uh, Lita, Lita cause yeah. I had a history with Lita or whatever. And I, you know, and I remember we all, everyone worked on it. You worked on that story and stuff with me, but I'm like, even then I was like, I don't think I was like, you know, I, we hung out, hung out then. And when I first came in, it, it was probably like, I feel like a year and a half, maybe a year before we started hanging, I was like, oh, he's cool as <laughs> snap. Yeah. Yeah. Cool we as best snap. friends ever since. Cool as yeah. snap, Beans. Well, Watch I know your mouth, Mickey. 
we're talking yeah. about this, uh, you know, on um, on the busted open for a second, and that is, you know, this. I don't know. It was a very weird, and I don't know if it still exists or not, but it was just like very weird, um, unspoken, really uh, set up, and, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a rule, but but it seemed that way sometimes, where the writers hang out with the writers and the talent hang out with the talent and the production crew and people working in the truck and on the floor and everything, they hang out with each other. And in, unless there's like a rare exception, you know, n- that shall not be mixed. Um, right. Always, you know, I broke that rule almost immediately. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. I have been wrestlers court because I was hanging out with edge and Christian so much. We have heard that your book is now available wherever you read fine books, paperback, hardback, and it is called There's Just One Problem, True Tales from the Former One-Time Seventh Most Powerful Person in WWE. Tell us about the book and and if no one's read it, I mean like what what are the what are we can can we expect like behind the scenes stuff? Is it juicy juicy? Yes, juicy. Tell us about what's inside. Yeah, well, I mean, I like to think it's a um it's it's definitely behind the scenes stories. Um, but it's also, you know, I like tend to gravitate towards the 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 even though like uh, you know the job drove me crazy a little bit sometimes overall i had a really good experience there um mm-hmm. and so i like tend to focus on like the crazier stories the like what the hell just happened like or how did that angle come about how did that storyline come about um type of stories than like you know any like you know sour grapes or bitterness or anything like that because you know, I parted on amicable terms, uh, which is rare for WWE writers sometimes. Yeah. Sure. Um, right. And so, yeah, this was like, you know, on the cover, or I have the, uh, I just happen to have the paperback with me. Isn't Yay! that interesting? Um, and yeah, you see Kurt Angle, uh, The Rock, Roddy Piper, who was my hero, uh, Agitated Vince, which is the state I usually made him. Uh, <laughs> you know, Love the artwork, by the way. Very cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. I mean, I didn't draw it, but I did look at it and liked Said it. I like that. And yeah. and and the Undertaker as a judge, even though some people think it's Michael Hayes, um, <laughs> get that from Wrestlers Court. And then on the right, back, there's even more. There's there's Booker T and Goldust. There's Chris Jericho and Bob Barker, Edge and Christian. Yeah. And a um and a, and a random um. XFL cheerleader to represent the XFL. Just to go back to what you were saying, Nikki, that's mm-hmm. why I think because, um, you know, Southern California Valerie has it correct when I'll use your formal name. Thank uh, you for that. It's your birth name. It is You're so birth. fancy. It's my yeah. biblical name. Yeah. <laughs> but there isn't a lot of socializing and social life, both with the writers and the crew. I think that's why you see a lot of both writers and crew. They end up you know, there's a lot of marriages in WWE between, Mm -hmm. um, you know, all working in one office all the time. But, um, that was when I was like, all right, so if I, if I like work with Mickey and Trish, let's say on a promo, um, and then we don't have to, let's, there were times, there was a period of time where I was just like, I'm going to not go to SmackDown and just do raw. Mm -hmm. And now it's like the show's over and I have like an opportunity to like socialize with friends for the only time in the week. Like, right. I don't care what unwritten rules are, whatever, well, I'm going to do that. So, yeah, yes. where, where's everyone at? You're at the hotel bar or you're in down. Let's let's head out. What the hell? What's mm-hmm. the worst that can happen? I think that's that was, cool you, know, that you, you socialize and you sort of like bridge that gap because it's not easy. And I, I was never like a big office person, but even in like TNA, we always call it TNA Impact Wrestling. When I started doing stuff, kind of, you know, taking the, the talent to our sponsor, it was that time it was an auto insurance company and I would have to do that and I would get the rental car because I was to take people back and forth. And it's funny because I found it interesting that the guys, some of the girls, mainly the guys would like once in a while kind of go, oh, your office, haha. But mainly the office was weirder about me fraternizing with the wrestlers as if like, be careful, they'll try. I'm like, but I'm from the wrestling side. I'm just, a, you know, I'm, I come from mm-hmm. the independent circuit and being, you know, wanting to be a valet and wanting to live my Stephanie McMahon fantasy, which, you know, parlayed into other things. But I found the office side was a little weirder. What did you find, Brian? Was it the wrestlers or the office? Like, who had more reticence about hanging out with each other? I honestly, I was too ignorant to really even pay attention to what you were supposed to do and what you weren't supposed to do. Sure. I just wanted to be and have a cool hang. 
Um, I mean, it ultimately is what got me in trouble and sent me to wrestler's court because I was hanging out with Edge and Christian too much, um, you know, and, and, you know, we were all the same age and we all have, you know, the same kind of pop culture reference and talk about movies and that kind of thing. And it wasn't just them. I mean, I had hang out with Jericho a lot, you know, or Kurt or whatever it was and Mickey. Um, but, but it wasn't like, you know, it was like whatever is i know it's probably more cognizant of the wrestlers i think mm-hmm. than a writer because with writer i'm just looking to have a fun you know like hey let's just blow off some steam and hang out and have a good time sure. wrestlers have to wonder like if i hang out with this person is the locker room going to be like oh you're politicking or is there right. some for what Agreed. you're doing so it would take me a while to warm up to people sometimes and a right. lot of that time people looked at it as standoffishness or he thinks he's better than us. I mean, that was essentially the crux of my, you know, appearance in wrestling court at the time as chronicled in the new uh, paperback version of the book, as well as the hardcover. <laughs> and the auto- I can't imagine uh, wrestling court. I'm so grateful. I was never taken. I was going to ask ladies, have you, because again, this is something that fascinates fans worldwide. And for me, I mean, again, I was in impact wrestling for nine years, but it wasn't the WWE type of you know wrestlers court so i'm fascinated to hear these stories lisa and mickey what had you have any experience there and then brian i would love to hear your first hand take on that i I probably should have been taken but i never did (laughs) i i was supposed to go to a wrestling court um uh trish and i had like a big huge angle at the beginning and um she upgraded me we were on air canada she upgraded me to first class and we were on this, this happened to be a plane with all the boys all the boys and i'm like I go, Trish, I don't feel comfortable sitting up here. I go, we're supposed to offer our seat to the people that have been in the business longer than we have. And um, she goes, well, I got, I already upgraded you. Uh, we, we can go over our match and stuff like that. So um, some, one of the boys came up to me and says, Hey, how was first class? And I go, I didn't know whether to piss off Trish, who I have an angle with or the boys. I was caught in a big, bad scenario and I was supposed to be taken to court. Um, and someone says, how you get out of court is you bribe jbl and undertaker so i pounded this town with like what how alcohol crown royal oh. and beer so jack i daniels. just yep yeah I, i'm sorry yeah. yeah yeah jack daniels and Ooh. i had freaking ton- i couldn't even unload the freaking alcohol from my back seat i bought shit ton of shit <laughs> god because i was crazy. awful Brian, Brian, did you have a similar scenario or was yours more uh, sinister? Was it a little... We have to read the book to find out. That's true. Well, yeah, I'll just say, I mean, I was not... I mean, I was accused infamously of um, accepting bribes from Edge in the form of a Flash action figure because he was at a comic show and someone gave him a Flash figure and Edge, I believe, is more of a daredevil guy. Um, and he his uh, he had to leave the show early for a family reason. And he gave me, he's like, hey, they gave me this Flash thing. If you want it, take it. And then um, Bob Holly oversaw this. He was like peering behind uh, some crates or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, next thing I know, and this is I, ironically, this is like, you know, that's, a, that's the nature of WWE, as you guys know, which is like, it really doesn't really matter what happened the day before. It, or I was, this was literally the SmackDown after WrestleMania 17, which I considered to be one of the greatest WrestleManias ever. And I was like heavily involved running around. I was doing, I was producing all the backstage stuff because Bruce was brother love in the gimmick battle royal. So he couldn't do it. I got to <laughs> work. Um, so... <laughs> I was running around doing everything and I was like, wow, I really crushed it that day. That was great. And then we did raw after where, you know, stone cold turned heel and beat up, you know, him and, and Vince and triple H and they, you know, rock went away and all that kind of thing. And then we were in Oklahoma city and yeah, that was when uh, Stephanie informed me of the charges that were being brought. But, but the difference is, you know, Lisa, you at least, I would think like had a vague notion or have at least heard of it, maybe. I had literally no idea because I was so outside the, you know, the locker room, um, you know, what it is. I'm not yeah. a wrestler. 
So I had no idea what it was. Um, and it was like me, Edge and Christian were all being brought up on charges. Um, and I won't get into it too much, but I will say like, I thought it would be like a small tribunal. Um, Stephanie's only advice to me was like, get beer and pizza. So I like with this, you know, the arena, you know, we hadn't opened up the gate, you know, the, the, there was no, like nothing for sale or anything, but I bribed the concession person for one box of pizza and one, like, you know, six pack of beer, I guess, cause they sell the cans. And uh -huh. then I confidently stride into the room and it's literally every wrestler, every office worker, every seamstress, every caterer, every referee, every agent. Um, <laughs> And I'm holding like a box of pizza, like for six people, maybe, um, and some beer. And yeah, I had no idea what I was uh, in store for. But yeah, it was the the Undertaker was the judge, JBL was the prosecutor, oh Kane God. was the bailiff. Um, <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, it was scary. It was scary. Did you I was represent I, I yourself? Met JBL. He was scary. He was he's super nice, but I didn't. I he he gives like because he's such a huge dude and Taker. They're both really lovely, Mister Taker. <laughs> I'm getting scared right now, but like they're intimidating. <laughs> they're lovely, but they're intimidating. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and you know, Mickey, I didn't, I didn't know to not, I didn't know to have someone represent me. Um, I, I was going to ask if they gave you the option, like, do you have someone here to represent you or are you going to represent yourself? I think I, well, yeah, they probably asked that like while I was on the stand with edge and Christian. <laughs> so I wasn't going to be like, uh, yes, here is my attorney, Val Venus, everybody. You know, like, I just, have to <laughs> just do it. Oh, he wears many hats. And yeah. hello for those kids. You would have been, been a good attorney. But afterwards, Jericho told me that, oh, you should have asked me to represent you. I would have done that. And I'm like, well, I didn't know this. I don't know what's happening. Yes. I didn't know this was a thing that but happened. I may I ask, if you had the, and I want to ask Lisa and Mickey after this, everyone please chime in. If you could have anyone from around that era or whatever, to represent you, who would you choose and why? Oh, man. I'm thinking, I, I'm, I, I'm not in the company. I don't know. I, my mind immediately goes to Al Snow because he's such a talker and he could get his- Oh, that's a good one. That I would be got mine, JR. but yeah, that's I what got, I, I don't I know. I would have got JR just because he was JR. awesome. <laughs> and he's the one that hired me. And it was my there talent. You go. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that's a hard one. I, I think I'd, I'd try to get Austin to represent me. Oh, I feel that's like he gets one. me. I feel like yeah. he gets me and he'd understand. <laughs> the kindred spirit, yeah. Yeah, well, Austin walked out of the trial about halfway through because A, because it was taking forever, and B, he had like a gigantic angle where he was supposed to beat up JR that night in Oklahoma City to cement his heeldom. And uh -huh. then, and like, he's got the, I mean, that's what's so crazy about the world of wrestling in general is like Stone Cold Steve Austin just turned heel, the biggest babyface star of all time. He's mm -hmm. about to attack his on screen and real life, if not best friend, top, top friend, maybe yeah. best friend um, mm -hmm. in a in a major angle on SmackDown. And what is he doing? He's in a some room in Oklahoma City listening <laughs> to me go, well, the Flash really isn't, you know, that's more <laughs> a than, than a golden age, but more Barry Allen than Jay Garrick, if you, and that's when he like, yeah, he just must have. He, he left. He had that angle, by the way, I mean, you talk about like wrestling history and everyone goes, you know, my era was the best, but thinking about like that era, which was when I was watching too, that's still really hard to watch. It's still like an awkward you know, um, visceral thing to watch the, the the Austin and Jr. thing. It's still really like that's how good it was. That's how you know something stands the test of time, right? I just saw a clip of it recently on Instagram, actually, one of the WWE accounts. It's it's one of those double edged swords because I don't think you know Jr. was the ultimate company man and would do anything, um, but he was so beloved by the audience that getting heat on him and Triple H did the same thing in Madison Square Garden. And I think Jr. thought ultimately, like, oh, this has got to be a rib on me. Vince is just, you know, kick gold Jr. when he's down. But like, the truth of the matter is, it really was a tribute to Jr. because he was such a trusted and beloved voice yeah. in the, you know, in the minds of the fans and the audience. Mm -hmm. Their, you know, their their gateway into the program and the psychology and the emotion that he flawlessly and still does, you know, like put into every single broadcast that you mess with him it's like this is a bad dude if you're doing that right 
Yeah. yeah. Um, How dare you? What side of it is like, you know, lay it in there, <laughs> you know, <I> think. <laughs> so, you know, well, Val, I think you mentioned WrestleMania 2000 or WrestleMania 16 in Anaheim or yeah. no, no, you didn't. You mentioned the cat and that's yes. what brought to my attention. That One of the fact, first females I saw and I'm like, she's wearing lots of pink and she's skipping. I am now interested. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> well, that my WrestleMania 16 or WrestleMania 2000 was the first my first WrestleMania working at WWE. I'd been to three, 10, 11, and 12, uh, three in a row as a fan, doing mm-hmm. my college road oh, trip wow. from Syracuse, and we went down to MSG and then to Hartford, and then I was living in LA at the time, so we went to Anaheim for 12. Um, but 2000 was my first as a fan, and I don't know if this is kind of like a good trivia question if you're ever doing bar trivia or want to be Candace Michelle on something. The only <laughs> one-on-one match in WrestleMania 2000 was the cat versus Terry Reynolds. Oh my God. These Literally are my, match. these are my milestones. And like, this is the kind of stuff I love. And people are always like, okay, well it's not, you know, Bianca versus Sasha. And I'm like, and I'm like listen, I loved that diva era. That's that's what caught my eye. You know, Stephanie was being a brat. And I was like, who's she? She's annoying. You know, she's this voice, you know, whatever. And then the cat, again, I'm not being funny. She was wearing pink because I was like, this stuff's for boys. All girls in my family. My sister was watching it. And then, of course, Jeff Hardy was there in Edge. And I was like, well, that's also interesting. What's going on here? So there's, you know, a lot of reasons to like <laughs> wrestling. Cute boys, girls in pink, you know, a, 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 a boss, you know, biatch kind of character, a little mean girl character with Stephanie McMahon. Those are the things that... Maybe they're not the most, you know, athletic reasons to watch, but that's what drew me in. So I love that. Terry Runnels versus the cat. These are the kind of things that I loved. I marvel at like the way the women's division now is in WWE when I think back to when I started because, mm-hmm. you know, the cat and Terry Reynolds and it was like billed as a cat fight and Val Venus was the referee and May and Mula got involved every other match on that card was either like a four way, three way multiple tag match, or, you know, like that's when that's why WrestleMania 17 adjusted. And there were a ton of one-on-one matches because someone was like, how do we have no one on real one-on-one matches? But my point is like, like in 2000 WrestleMania, I'm sorry, Royal rumble 2000, the women were represented in a miss rumble, you know, beauty pageant. Which yeah. was basically an excuse, you know, for for Vince to pay homage to his favorite movie, something about Mary, with May, you know, like coming out of her swimsuit or whatever it is. Uh-huh. Uh, and now you see the women's, division which is also is a hilarious and wonderful movie, by the way. It is. Yes. Put that it out is. There. There's something about May. <laughs> yeah. But I just gotta say to to Lisa and Mickey, you know, like I don't. I don't think this new era like really happens without the inroads that you guys made Aww, in WWE. So. I remember, I remember like, you know, and we were talking about this. Uh, I was talking about this recently. Um, like it wasn't due to like, oh, they can't do it. It was more of like the audience doesn't want to see that. Mm-hmm. And I know like Lisa, it's like you were, involved in two things that you know you both you fought really hard for like this this hardcore match with trish or no holds barred or whatever it was with kendo sticks and everything else that like proved everybody wrong like no in the right circumstance and it's the right story and the right characters uh it could be just as compelling and of course they could pull it off uh and then the wrestlemania 20 match with molly uh with nora and the head shaving um like that was i remember (laughs) i was so stupid because like Nora was like passionately pleading. Nora Molly Holly was passionately pleading to me. And and I at first thought like she was really upset. And I thought like she's upset. Clearly she's upset because she doesn't want to get her head shaved. So I'm like, don't worry, Nora, we won't do this match. And she's like, no, idiot. I'm, I want to do this match. I want to get my head shaved. That's the whole point of me coming to this angle. I'm like, ah, well, that definitely that definitely changes my perspective on it. Um, And then like the long-term angle that, that Mickey and Trish did, you know, as the super fan and like there were, there weren't month long year long storylines that like, you know, with the women's division that went backstage, went out of the arena, got some dude named Jack and a giant present box. I just saw a recent reminder of Jack, dear Jack. 
poor Jack. Billy? Sweet <laughs> yeah, Jack. so it popped up in my feed the other day of like, oh, on this day. Well, I don't know if it was on this day, but you know how you'll get at it with stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, Jack. Poor Jack. Yeah, poor poor Jack. <laughs> but basically, kudos to you, to you guys for you know, really I love you. Your gun. I think the reason why that storyline for me personally, like it, it was able to evolve and do all that is because everybody was working on it together. Like Trish was working. I was working on it. You were working on it. You know, all the writers kind of chipped in. People had ideas, didn't have ideas. You know, I don't know yep. whose idea was Jack, though. It was not that my was, idea. It was all Alex Greenfield. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alex was I'm his, a ton on the storyline, too. <laughs> um, but no, no, I don't, I, yeah, I don't remember it was, but it was, I don't know. Someone kicked him in the head. I think at one point I forget. What yeah. It. What do you think in all the stuff that you were a part of, like personally, like what is your most, and, and maybe it's not the WrestleMania moment or something because it has a different meaning, but what is your most memorable or your most proud to be a part of? Moment? Um, you know, you know, when I see like someone cashing in money in the bank, I go like, oh, that's really cool that this legacy remains because this is something, you know, myself and Chris Jericho and Michael Hayes basically created and worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was not intended to be, you know, um, like cash-ins weren't even a thing that we had considered back then. Like when right. we originally pitched it, it was going to be like, oh, this will set up a pay-per-view match because someone will win it and go, aha, I have a title match. So I challenge you at Unforgiven this September, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, right. The whole like, oh, someone's down cash in now just evolved. It wasn't the original stuff. Um, right. But when I see like, you know, like the fact that like, you know, you could go on YouTube and like watch the Edge and Christian five second poses in a, you know, compilation like that's uh, stuff I worked on, like even even like something that would have been huge and iconic, regardless of whether I was in the company or not like the first rock Hulk Hogan promo segment in Chicago. Um, don't get me wrong. Like they don't need to do anything. And that's going to be an unforgettable, unbelievable moment. But the fact is I did work with all, you know, both of them. We were in Chicago, mm -hmm. the all state arena where we always do the shows, like working on that promo all day. Um, right. And so like, I, I think that's really cool when you see stuff like that on the, you know, 50 greatest moments in raw history or whatever it is. Um, you know, being able to, you know, reflect and go, you know what, I contributed to that in some way. Yeah, so that's yeah. Kind of nice. Um, that's and then, um, you know, just it's like stuff in general. Like I'll sometimes go on YouTube and just watch promos when during heel rock period of two thousand three, mm -hmm. and remember like how much fun that was, or Kurt Angle's promos, or Booker T and Gold Dust, right. Um, or, or you messing with boyfriend Jack, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the angle with Trish. Yeah. Or at the very least, the the room with all of the cutouts and the pictures on the, the eyeballs wall. cut out all of them. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. And just, yeah, like, like reflect on because there's so much kind of, you know, day to day hassles and last minute changes and stress and somebody's hurt and someone doesn't like this the what they're doing and it's got to be a rewrite and and vince changes a bunch of stuff and you go oh man the original stuff would have been so much better and i'm sure you know as performers you feel that way too when stuff gets yeah. changed last second but at the end of the day you know and i haven't been in wwe you know like under employment there since you know full-time i left in well i ended working full-time there in 2012 and started mm -hmm. doing part-time for seven bucks and part-time consulting for WWE. And mm -hmm. I th that lasted for three years. So I actually left the company completely in July of 2015. And like, all of a sudden you just look up and like, wow, that's eight years ago. Right. Um, Crazy. And, and for all the stress and all the craziness. And, you know, I remember being on a conference call at one point and then said something and he said, why don't you have a good cry about it? And I took whatever was in my hand and I flung it into the wall and made a big hole in it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a rental. I really uh, shouldn't do this. And uh... But at yeah. the end of the day, you know, you tend to I tend to at least block out that stuff and mm -hmm. remember like the stuff that I'm proud of or the stuff that, you know, or even the stuff that doesn't work, you know, look right. back and all that kind of thing. Laugh and, at and it. 
Yeah. And, or take the like the surreal, the craziness, um, the like the stuff that you say to people at like a like at a party or something and they go, oh, my God, that really happened and say, <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe I should put a compilation of these stories together and put it in book form. And so totally. That's- We're so and glad that you did buy it. Yeah. What I think what's so amazing about your book, and I know we're, we're going to wrap it up here because we've had you on here forever, but I think what's amazing about your book, and just to bring it back to that, is there's a lot of books out there from the wrestler's perspective. Yeah. You're an unsung hero as far as being a writer and stuff, and I think that you guys don't always get the credit you deserve. The credit you deserve, because I think the writers get a lot of blame when things don't look good or when it's like not great or whatever, like, oh, it must be the writer's fault or whatever. But when the stuff is really great, the praise never really comes back to you guys. I think it's it's a commonality a little bit more now where people where you're starting to get that, you know, respect in that sense, because the longest time people didn't even realize that there were writers. Right. Um, So I'm a big fan of that. But I think your stories from the rest from the writer's side from your you know view and and your life experience is way is way different than the wrestlers and I really more uh it would resonate a lot more with a lot of the fans because of that's the way they would see it as a normal person walking into this damn circus that we call wrestling you know by the way for those watching you have to read this book we're going to put all of the links in the description so you can read it now and i will say brian on behalf of everyone watching and me as a fan especially in this specific era that you're mentioning i want to say thank you for the memories and all of your hard work and all of that stress i mean that's what i grew up watching that's made me fall in love with wrestling so thank you for that ladies please leave uh brian with a final cheers because you guys have gotten the pleasure to work with him before so i'll i'll leave the floor to you guys I want to say thank you, Brian, for all the memories and thank you for just um, believing in our female division and just just being part of our life and, and wanting to come on our show. We really appreciate that. And, you know, um, I think we became we came from a generation where we all are still friends. So that's that's positivity about wrestling. And yeah. you could you could get on yeah. it as much as you want, but we're still a family. Yeah, totally. Yes. And I was, I'm grateful to be your friend and that we can still hang out and just have conversations even years after like we haven't even worked together in so long and I'm always grateful for your success it's cool to see you shine and do so many cool things and whatever you do well honestly. thank you and and That's right back fine. at you Love right you. back at everybody on this thank you so much <laughs> thank yeah. you so much we're wishing you all the continued success and again make sure that you're getting that book and getting the descriptions below boom, boom, Brian boom. thank you so much cheers to you A cheers Thanks. Cheers. This is the word to go, yo, go.